it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I um, am a professor in the School of Education and Human Development. I came six and a half years ago to the University of Miami to help realize the vision of our dean, um, who changed the school name from School of Education to School of Education and Human Development. And as part of that, we've developed some new programs. We have a new undergraduate major in Human and Social Development, a master's program in Community and Social Change, and just last year and a half, we started a new PhD program called Community Wellbeing. So our school is sort of about community, social change, well-being. So as you can imagine, we are natural partners with CCE. Um, but it still is a major honor and privilege to be here for the significant achievement, um, the recognition by Phi Beta Kappa of um, Dr. Backen and the center um, because of how much they've accomplished in such a short time. When I came, um, it was, there was a nascent, I think I joined sort of at the second iteration of a civic engagement task force, um, which Robin had assembled. And between that time and what, what is going on now at the center is quite amazing. So I want to be able to say in the short time I, that I have just some of the ways in which I feel that the center has been a game changer. And I know that's a very cliche term, but, um, but really it's true. The center has moved the needle on our campus in terms of helping students, faculty, and community partners um, engage in a way that wasn't there before. There were certainly students that were motivated, excited, and interested in doing great things. We've had a Butler Center for um, civic leadership and, and you know, volunteerism for a number of years, but the combination of academic learning with <coughs> civic engagement um, wasn't happening in the same cohesive way until Robin got here. So I'm going to talk about three areas of impact very briefly, um, but I, I, do, I did want to say that it's, you know, it's a thrilling honor, but I'm actually not surprised because of how much Robin and her staff, from Catherine at the very beginning to Ashley and all the other sort of small lean machine um, that you have going, how much you've actually done. So it's amazing that you've got the recognition, but it's not so surprising for those of us who know how much has been going on. So anyway, we have a common purpose at the university now. Um, some of you may have heard at the U. We transform lives through research, um, teaching, and service. But even before that was sort of an explicitly stated common purpose, Robin and the center have been doing this in a variety of ways. So the three ways I'm going to talk about are um, ways in which the center has impacted students, the ways in which the center has impacted faculty, including myself, and then even more broadly, the reach of the center to places like New Jersey which I'll, I'll be more specific about in a minute. Okay, so first I want to talk about the Civic Scholars Program. So what is it? These are excellent students um, who are these kinds of enthusiastic, I want to change the world undergraduates who want to become engaged in community work, um, but previously maybe did that in ways that were, you know, volunteer opportunities, a day here, a day there, organized a, you know, a club or something, but really didn't have the opportunity to take what they're learning in, class, in the classroom in terms of theories and constructs about how you do community work and match that with these experiential opportunities at community-based organizations and agencies. So the Civic Scholars um, Program, which um, Dr. Backen and this center started, um, is a, a way for students to have sort of a cohesive cognate or set of courses that designates them as civic scholars. This is a designation that is very important. It's almost like an honors designation, really, at this point. They take four three-credit courses, so they have to commit to taking four three-credit courses that are all you know, something related to community engagement or community-based scholarship. They enroll in a five-week reflection seminar, um, including a presentation of learning component where they have to describe and articulate what they have learned. Um, they have to be engaged in at least three co-curricular leadership development experiences, and they have to do a capstone project. And in doing, and they have to maintain their GPA while they're doing all this. So we have excellent students like Farah, who you just saw, um, a number of other excellent students who jumped at the chance to have the opportunity not just to sort of cohese their educational and community experiences around a set of learning opportunities, but also to get the recognition at graduation that they are, and on their transcript, that they are leaving the university as civic scholars. So that's been a wonderful program, um, and it's meant that I have many, many more students in my class. I teach a community psychology undergraduate class from across the university, not just from my own school and college, um, because my class is one of these civic, civically tagged civic scholars classes. So that's just one. Second, the Engaged Faculty Fellows Program. So what is this? This is an opportunity for full-time faculty at the university to competitively be selected, to um, be involved in a process that uh, means that they, um, we, I did it. So we, we work 
together as a group with the center to create or substantially adapt our courses such that there will be a significant component of civic engagement or service learning. And again, this is a way for us to be able to link the classroom experience that students are having with experiential opportunities in the community. So we do this in sort of a, a workshop style, which is wonderful because we both are, learn some of the concepts of civic engagement, um, but we also get exposed to some of the cutting edge scholarship related to service learning, civic professionalism, um, uh, and, and then it concludes with this presentation to the university community so that all, everybody else who wasn't necessarily part of this workshop group, this intense experience, gets to learn from what we've done over the, the year. So how does this impact the university? Well, I don't know about where you are in your daily lives, but universities sometimes tend to be like these little siloed experience where you don't necessarily interact, for example, from I'm in the School of Education and Human Development, I might not necessarily I might meet at a reception, but I might not necessarily have meaningful, substantial conversations about pedagogy with someone from modern languages or someone from the School of Architecture or the School of Nursing. What this opportunity, the Engaged Faculty Fellows programs, Program means is that faculty get together on a regular basis and have those kinds of meaningful conversations about what does it mean to do this kind of engaged pedagogy and how does that look in your school and how does that look in your classroom and what kinds of challenges have you faced and how can we apply some of this cutting edge scholarship to what we're doing and create these courses that provide this experience for students. So again, that's just sort of the second way just two ways that um, the center has impacted me and hence impacted the university. So the third and last thing I'll talk about, which is related to the New Jersey reference, um, is that um, the center started this vision of developing a journal, an academic journal, a scholarly journal, um, in collaboration with colleagues at Rutgers University, um, to be able to be a source of dissemination of some of the wonderful work that happens in communities you know, across the nation, across the world. So this is very ambitious to start a journal. Um, but we're actually, you know, we're, we're She's doing it, yeah. So, and this journal is unique because it provide it has three sort sort of sections, if you will. We're calling them portals, but um, you know, typically academic journals, it's academics publishing their research, which often is quite jargon filled and hard to read. This journal is designed such that we have a traditional research portal or section. We also have a student-driven section. So this is a section of the journal where we're gonna publish pieces specifically from students who are engaging in community-based work. And then thirdly, a community portal. So anyone who's working in a community-based agency will provide um, assistance and help with you know, how to shape the, um, the piece so that it would fit a journal. But the idea is that this provides a, an opportunity for community-based agencies, community-based activists to disseminate their work as well. So um, I, I, even though right now it's sort of between Miami and New Jersey, we're assembling a board, an editorial board, that really spans the country, honestly. And we're hoping that this journal will be an opportunity for both academics, students, and community partners to engage in a, a conversation, if you will, about um, engaged scholarship. So I, I, you know, when I found out that I was going to be providing a testimonial, I said, you know, I emailed Robin in a panic a couple days ago, like, what should I talk about? We've been involved in so many things. You've, doing, you've done so much. Um, so I just picked those three things because I hope that they emphasize for you the kind of game-changing impact the center has really had for us. And this is all, I know I, I, I have a short, with minimal resources, okay? So, and minimal resources in terms of both like money, but also in terms of the staff. It's really Robin, Ashley, these really um, inspired graduate students and a host of other um, partners that come together to make th these things happen. So either, you know, so anyway, I don't know how you do it. I think you must get little sleep. I have this working hypothesis that it's the delicious Cuban coffee, perhaps, <laughs> but it's really wonderful. It's wonderful to be here um, on the occasion of my sister's birthday, who's here. Happy birthday, Hannah, but also congratulations, Robin, so well-deserved. <laughs>